Okay, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, we are ready to start the next Scientix webinar. Um, today webinar uh, will be given by Maria and Stratos, and uh, they will tell us about Manuskills approach in rising students' awareness in manufacturing for STEM. Uh, so, as a first, Maria will start the presentation, and later Stratos will continue. At, uh, in the meantime, you are very much welcome to, to post uh, the questions on using chat function. Uh, after the presentation, our presenters will go over the uh, questions and answer them. So please uh, use the chat one more time. Use the chat uh, function to ask the question to Maria and Stratus. And that's all from my side. Uh, Maria, the floor is yours. So please uh, go ahead further. Thank you. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining us for this Scientix webinar. Uh, my name is Maria, and I am a scientific assistant at the Polytechnic uh, Institution of uh, Lausanne in Switzerland. And today, together with my colleague Stratos from uh, LMS, University of Patras, Greece, uh, we are going to present you a different way to engage your students in STEM-related activities, which is the Manuskills approach. Uh, so, first of all, um, this is our agenda for the day. It is uh, slightly altered from the original one. First, we're going to have a brief introduction to Manuskills. Uh, then Stratos is going to present one of our activities, Interactive Product Assembly. And uh, finally, we're going to have some time for uh, questions, answers, uh, or recommendations from you. Um, so, uh, I would like to begin this presentation with what Manuskills actually is. So, Manuskills is a European research project that aims at raising students' awareness into manufacturing-related topics and um, to support their training of new manufacturing skills. Uh, so, Manuskills targets, um, in general, uh, STEM education, and more particularly, the E from STEM education, which stands for engineering. Basically, this is what uh, differentiates Manuskills from all similar STEM initiatives, because even though there are uh, many initiatives uh, supporting science, technology, or math education, it seems that engineering is underrepresented in primary and secondary education. Uh, this fact actually becomes obvious when we ask children about their perception of manufacturing, which can basically be summarized by uh, this picture. So you can see that for children working in a factory, uh, it's something very uh, dirty and polluting. Uh, so <clears throat> what Manuskills tries to do uh, is through its activities to revive students' interest for STEM. As you can see uh, in this slide, uh, students from the age of 8 to 10 are quite interested, actually, uh, in STEM-related topics, but uh, from the age of uh, 14 to 15, uh, this interest starts uh, to decline. So, Manuskills is targeting this critical age, uh, between 10 and 18, when usually students are asked to make important decisions about their future career path. Now, uh, concerning manuscripts activities, uh, here you can see uh, our link to our platform where you can have free access. Uh, it is our online updated platform uh, where you may find our uh, six activities. You can see uh, a, a picture of the, the platform in this slide. Uh, its activity actually consists of two parts. The first part is a delivery mechanism, uh, which is a cutting-edge ICT educational tool 
for example, uh, a delivery mechanism can be a serious game or a simulation or an educational video uh, or any other uh, ICT tool. And the second part of the activities is a pedagogical scenario, which is basically a technology-supported learning plan um, that aims at enabling teachers in incorporating its activity into their teaching. So now in the following slides, uh, I will briefly present these uh, six activities. Uh, this is our first activity. I think that everybody knows what these are. These are Legos uh, in different shapes and different forms. But uh, have you ever considered what it takes to create and produce these Lego minifigures? Uh, this activity aims exactly at helping students understand these questions. Uh, at the moment, this activity exists only as a board game. Uh, but soon we will have uh, an online version too. But n right now, if you uh, visit our platform, you will be able to, to see the pedagogical scenarios and uh, supporting material for the activity. The second activity is life cycle assessment game. Um, it is a serious game and students get to play the role of a young sustainability manager working for a manufacturing company. And in this slide, you can see some screenshots uh, of the game. It is also available on, uh, on our platform. Um, moving on to our third activity, which is how to build a skateboard. Uh, it is a simulation, uh, and this time students uh, get to create a skateboard from components provided by the software through, uh, through a tree structure. Okay. Our fourth activity is EcoFactory, which is a serious game that allows students to try uh, the experience of being the manager of a modern factory and provide them with a fun experience in an industrial plant producing different kinds of products. Uh, our fifth activity, interactive product assembly, actually is the activity that we are going to elaborate on uh, later on today. But just to give you a brief idea, um, the interactive product assembly is a virtual reality application and aims at showing students that all machines, devices, and equipment that we use in our everyday life are a set of parts and components that have been assembled together. Um, so this is all for this activity. And finally, our last activity is Teaching Factory, uh, which is a novel learning method for bringing the factory to the classroom and engage students uh, in problem-solving activities of actual industrial problems. Now, uh, my colleague Stratos uh, will uh, present interactive product assembly. Uh, and please, if you have uh, any questions, uh, don't hesitate to use the chat so that uh, we can address them uh, by the end of the presentation. So, Strato. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Maria said, I'm a research assistant at the University of Patras, LMS, uh, and I will present uh, the experiment Interactive Product Assembly. So, The learning objective of uh, interactive product assembly is to teach the students the basic principles behind the assembly procedure uh, of a product and the value of, a conf of uh, the configurable product in manufacturing. Uh, the level of difficulty is easy because it's targeted towards uh, students that uh, have no interaction so far with manufacturing. Uh, and the only requirement is English language skills 
uh, everything else is provided to the students. So education value, value uh, we aim to show the students that usually all products that are uh, around them are, are uh, manufactured and assembled by human or robot uh, in a factory. Uh, and uh, there are several production principles that need to be followed in order for a manufacturing process to be successful and to have a product that uh, functions properly and then uh, an important part of the manufacturing process is simulations. Uh, the core simulations give us uh, uh, more or uh, less time to offer us uh, the, let's say, the visualization and uh, maybe the interaction with the actual product in far less time and with far less effort. And this helps us to eliminate errors and uh, reduce costs. So, uh, many times, in order to, to do simulations, we use virtual reality. Uh, virtual reality, uh, probably students at that age uh, have been introduced to virtual reality through animation movies or through games, so they are familiar with VR, but in an entertainment uh, state, let's say. So we aim to show them that virtual reality and uh, maybe augmented reality and holograms, stuff that they usually hear around them, are used by big industries and, industries and factories in order to save uh, money and time and make the production plan more efficient. Uh, also, uh, the value of the configurable, portable, uh, the configurable product sorry, uh, and the importance of flexibility during the design and assembly and how uh, different uh, versions of the same product can be uh, manufactured by the same plant, by making, uh, let's say, the production line flexible to achieve this target. So we offer uh, to the children a view uh, of uh, the machines in their everyday life, that everything around them needs to be designed and assembled for use. It's not that uh, we just gather the materials and uh, we build something. It needs to be designed for that. Uh, and that uh, in order to fit everyone's needs, the products must be configurable. So uh, the application uh, looks like the picture that you saw in the previous slide. And now I'm uh, presenting, let's say, the plan of the lesson. So the lesson is divided in three parts. Uh, since we have uh, students that are not familiar with manufacturing, we give them a presentation, then they engage with the application, and then we monitor the reflection of the application uh, on their knowledge and on their awareness. So to go in detail through each step, during the presentation, uh, students are taught about the definition of manufacturing, the typical steps of a manufacturing procedure, uh, what is a configurable product, and then uh, what is virtual reality, uh, how, let's say, everything uh, in VR uh, functions and is programmed, and how that helps in uh, manufacturing simulations, and how manufacturing simulations help uh, in the mechanical engineering in general. After that uh, comes the fun part for the students. They get to engage with high-end uh, simulation platforms. They, uh, they can use a high-end uh, cave, which is an uh, abbreviation for computer-aided uh, computer virtual environment. Uh, it's uh, usually a, a setup uh, which is consists of uh, three big screens, 
three or more big screens with uh, tracking support, motion tracking, in order to monitor movement of the user and translate it to virtual object movement in the virtual environment. Uh, also, please feel free to interrupt me at any point if you want to ask something, if something is not clear to you. Uh, and uh, what I probably didn't mention is that at this first, first step, at the prototype, uh, the students uh, do the simulation at our premises at the University of Patras, which, uh, where we have the, this uh, equipment. So, the cave setup, uh, because it may be new to some of you, uh, it, uh, as you can see, this is a typical uh, cave setup. It's our, our case of cave setup. It's uh, consists of three big screens, as I told you, which are based on uh, stereoscopic projection. There is uh, motion tracking by infrared cameras at the top of the cave. And uh, you use, we use 3D glasses in order to see the stereoscopic view, the 3D as we see in cinema, which is more realistic. And uh, if you see these uh, little silver balls on the, the glasses, these are passive markers. When, so when you wear this pair of glasses and you enter the cave, the system knows where you are and can monitor your movements. Uh, there is a similar, similar setup for the hand of the user so that he can uh, cut, uh, cut objects and place them at their position in order to, um, to assemble the final product. So it's basically a simulation uh, very close to reality. And afterwards, after the students have uh, assembled the virtual product, which is a remote, uh, remote controlled assembly, uh, remote controlled car, sorry. Uh, they should be able to explain the concepts that uh, have been presented to them, which are the configured product and the manufacturing in general and virtual reality. And we have an open discussion with the students about their experience, what, did, what they liked, what, what, what they didn't like. Uh, and after that, some, some uh, time, after the experiment has, has been done, we visit them at their school and uh, we have another discussion with them about what uh, to see what uh, has, uh, let's say, what they know now about manufacturing, what they have forgotten, what let's say, what uh, they might have missed, to monitor the effectiveness of the whole uh, procedure. So we had our first experiment uh, about a month ago, at the start of May. You can see the first group of students uh, at our lab. Uh, this slide is where they are giving the lecture about uh, manufacturing. And uh, this slide shows a student in a cave wearing glasses. Uh, you can see the cameras around the top. And uh, by using the virtual hand, she assembles the, the remote controlled car. Uh, after the first uh, experiment, so all students enjoyed the activity. They got to see how virtual reality works, and uh, apart from movies and entertainment that can be used to actual uh, applications in real life, uh, we, we saw that uh, the students were acquainted with uh, the equipment rather easily, uh, easier than adults, because uh, I guess because they are familiar with uh, these things since early age, so they have no problem with uh, getting familiar with the equipment. Uh, their awareness was definitely raised about manufacturing. Uh, they, most of them, they didn't know what manufacturing is before the session. Afterwards, uh, we have uh, a lot of questions about, uh, let's say, about companies, about uh, the configurable product, and about, uh, let's say, how a car can have uh, different types of seats, for example. Cars were the main point of discussion because it's closer to the student experience, because they use cars all the time. It's uh, the, the typical, uh, let's say, machine around it. And there was discussion about the mass production plants and the limited production plants and how it functions depending on the needs of the customers. Uh, regarding the teachers that uh, uh, were 
that uh, accompanied the students. They li I really liked the experiment. Uh, they highlighted the importance of the students getting familiar with the environment of the university first and with manufacturing school a second, which is our school here. Uh, and they inquired for further participation. So I, I guess the whole procedure was uh, could be considered a success. And uh, in order to to show you, let's say, the flexibility of uh, of this type of simulation, uh, let's say this uh, setup can only be found at uh, virtual reality labs, the one that I showed you before. So how this can be applied in the classroom? There are uh, low-cost devices, which of course offer a, a less realistic, but still realistic, better than a simple presentation, still the realistic way to simulate manufacturing procedures or any kind of procedures. And uh, you probably all know Kinect, it's a uh, motion tracking, if you can see the presentation. Kinect is a, a tracking device using uh, infrared uh, rays. It costs about uh, 200 euros, I think, uh, something similar. Uh, there, are very, there are more similar devices at, uh, at the market, and it tracks the whole body. It can track up to 23 joints. You can track the, the wrist, the elbow, and so on. Uh, and uh, the Kinect, coupled with a visualization device, uh, can be a low-cost immersive uh, setup. Another uh, motion tracking equipment is Leap Motion, which does finger tracking. Let's say if you want uh, the students to cut something with their fingers, uh, you can put a Leap Motion on, the, on a desk, and then uh, it tracks all the fingers as long as they are on top of it. And the students can uh, turn knobs or they can uh, place bolts and screw them or uh, you can do finger tracking with motion. It's just a, also a low-cost device. Uh, uh, a visualization device, uh, because uh, mainly we use visualization and tracking for, uh, for VR. So about visualization devices, uh, Google has recently released ca the cardboard device, which uh, is a very low-cost uh, solution for VR. You can place a smartphone on the front of a cardboard box, like you see in the picture, and uh, by using the gyroscope of the smartphone, you basically have tracking, and by using the screen of your smartphone, you have 3D projection. Uh, and uh, if you haven't tried it, uh, it's uh, really impressive for the amount of money it costs. It costs about uh, 20 or 30 dollars or euros max. And it's really impressive for its price. And another, uh, a bit more expensive solution, but uh, still low cost, it's considered low cost. It's a 3D projector that can project the image on a wall and coupled with some uh, motion tracking device that I described you before, you can have a virtual reality setup and you can run the simulation there. Some teacher with the support of an engineer can run the simulation at the school and not have to visit a virtual reality lab. Uh, so that's it, basically, from me. Uh, this was an indicative experiment of Mindspeed's project. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, yes, uh, Stratis, I saw one question on chat. Uh, if you could answer it, it was a question from, let me just see, because I, in the meantime we had some technical problems, so I need to go chat with the other um, participants. But um, that's a question from uh, Stiana. Uh, that's, uh, and uh, Sienna writes, that's great, but how schools can take part in projects like this to connect with the real manufacturer? Could you please answer to Sienna? Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know if I get the, the question right, uh, but uh, we're not aiming to connecting the, the, the school students to real manufacturing, but to introduce them to a manufacturing simulation that is under control, let's say under our control, 
For example, uh, at, in the application as it is right now, they are assembling a RC remote car. It's uh, a scaled, uh, let's say, formula racing car, which uh, has uh, four or five parts that are missing, and uh, the children have to identify these parts and place them in the correct positions with the help of uh, with the help of the system, of course, by getting instructions. And uh, and uh, we can control if they let's say get the wrong object instead of the one that the instructions tell them, or. Uh, we, we want to see that uh, they can uh, understand how a product close to them, like a remote controlled car, can be assembled in a, in a real manufacturing plant, let's say. And by the way, this car is a car that is, uh, uh, let's say, manufactured from students of our uh, school during the second year of their uh, of of their. Uh, uh, of, of a class, okay. it's a part of a class during the second year of the university here at the uh, University of Padres. If I didn't answer the question, please feel free to ask me again or clarify it. Yes, yes. If uh, if it was, I think it uh, it was kind of clear. But if uh, you still feel like uh, need for more, just please use again our chat function. In the meantime, uh, we managed to to connect with our third par uh, presenter who at first was not able to, to, to join us, but uh, luckily uh, it's changed. So right now uh, we will invite you to, to watch the movie. You won't be able to, uh, to hear the sound, but it's not important. Uh, the most important is that you see the content. So uh, just please relax and for a little more than two minutes we will see a short movie and then we will continue our webinar. Okay, thank you. Maria, you can start. Okay, uh, so we're going to show you uh, a brief video of uh, another experience uh, of ours, the how to build a skateboard experience. Uh, you won't be able to hear the sound, as Anya said, but uh, uh, I will uh, explain everything that's needed. So it's uh, an experience uh, created by the show system. Maria, I can hear the sound, so maybe the other also can. Oh, okay then.
Okay, so uh, this is the second activity we're going to present today. Uh, if you have any questions about this one, uh, our colleague uh, Andrea is here uh, and he can answer them. And uh, if you have any other questions or suggestions or anything you would like to say concerning any one of the activities, we will be glad to, to answer them at this point. I think we should give uh, everybody uh, a moment to, to, to formulate questions via chat, uh, or otherwise uh, we are such a, let's say, small group today that we can uh, do it directly. So uh, you can unmute yourself and, uh, and, and ask the question directly to Maria and the other presenters. Maria, maybe in the meantime, uh, you can tell us uh, what, according to you, uh, was the most uh, exciting part of this uh, activity, the most important, the most uh, catchy, what you think was the, the, the most uh, worth to share. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like just to say that uh, uh, if uh, anyone is interested in participating, uh, in this project and applying any of these activities to his classroom with our support, of course. Um, you can see my email uh, on this slide. Uh, and so you can get in touch with us uh, or, of course, you can ask any questions uh, right now. So uh, concerning the, the activities, uh, I think that um, we have enough activities, actually six activities, that uh, target different age groups. So uh, each activity is quite uh, unique. We have activities for late primary school. This is from uh, uh, 9 to 12 years old and for secondary education and tertiary education, but uh, this is not the point of this webinar. Um, I see a question in the chat. Uh, first of all, Stratos has uploaded the link to the platform for anyone to, uh, to visit. It's easier this way. What is the age group of the students? Uh, for example, for how to build a skateboard activity that you saw in the video, uh, it's for secondary school students, so from 12 years old to 18 years old, with uh, the appropriate for each uh, age educational material. And for uh, how to build a skateboard, it's actually the same age group uh for interactive product product assembly I meant sorry. Okay, if you were asking for the link to the chat, you can see it. You can see it right now I guess. Okay, perfect. So I will just go back to the activities to make it easier to remember them. So the first one is the Lego Exploratorium. 
this one is appropriate for uh, secondary school students too. Uh, okay, how to build a skateboard? It's the one that we have already talked about for secondary education too. Echo Factory is also appropriate for younger students for late primary school and secondary school. And finally, the interactive product uh, assembly is also for secondary education. The one, the, the activities that I didn't mention, the teaching factory and the life cycle assessment are more appropriate for even older students in tertiary education. But if you're interested, uh, uh, we could uh, try them on uh, um, 17 or 18 years old uh, students. Uh, I would like to mention that uh, on the platform uh, there is uh, a web uh, web based version of interactive product interactive product assembly where you can play and see the let's say the idea behind the experiment it's not uh, immersive it's like a web game like a, like playing a game in browser but you can see the scenario, let's say, about the assembly of the remote controlled car. And also uh, there, there is the echo factor experiment, which is uh, for uh, second, uh, secondary education as well, and it's uh, fully web-based. And it's uh, based on the environment and the uh, factories in the environment, and how they can be combined. And you can see, you can also see descriptions and uh, applications for the other experiments as well. Thank you, Stratos. I have a question. Uh, I know it's too, too early for uh, making like some conclusions and uh, summary, but just from your intuition, because you said the problem is that uh, at the beginning of your presentation, Maria said that students, they are losing their interest in the STEM education around age 14, 15, and apparently you um, try to make this kind of activity with the students. And to just, just of course, but as your intuition, not like uh, uh, concrete numbers, do you see any positive impact on the students uh, by this activity? Maybe some story, some uh, individual cases. C could you share some kind of this experience? Yes. Uh, right now, actually, at this point of uh, uh, of the project, we are testing uh, the activities. Um, so till now, uh, we have tested pretty much all of them, uh, at least uh, twice. Um, I mean, uh, to different uh, schools, different teachers, different uh, students. Um, Till now, uh, the children, uh, actually the students, uh, look quite uh, interested in uh, in the activities because they are quite different from what they are used to deal with when they're going to school or engaging in any uh, STEM subject. And actually, uh, they are interested because uh, they have uh, no prior idea of what uh, engineering or manufacturing is, really. So you are able to change the image of the manufacturing. They don't have it no more, this ugly factory and tired people working hard. They actually have other view of the manufacturing, which is already a uh, very good uh, let's say, first step to, to, to change uh, the situation. And, okay, that's from the student's perfect perspective. And what about teachers so with who you mm -hmm. cooperate, how they react uh, about mm -hmm. this kind of activities? What's their feedback, if you mm -hmm. could share also? Yes, of course. Uh, we try to provide uh, a lot of material, uh, supporting material to the teachers, uh, also available in our platform, the pedagogical scenarios, uh, have a very um, 
uh, detailed, um, provide a very detailed idea of uh, what uh, the teachers and the students uh, will do in the activities that we propose. And uh, the teachers actually, uh, it is a very creative procedure because the teachers uh, are free to uh, intervene in the pedagogical scenarios and uh, change uh, any parts that may not apply to their classroom um, because of uh, the time that there is available or uh, if they think that uh, the age of their students is too young or too old for an activity. So uh, we, we always consult with teachers and uh, work with them in order to create the final project, the final uh, uh, activity. Uh, that's perfect. And in the meantime, we have some more questions from our participants. So if you could uh, first read the question so we know which one is answered and one of you if could answer okay. that would be maybe the best. Okay, the first one that I see is from Svetlana. Is the platform open to all? Uh, yes, the platform is uh, open to all for free. You can just click on the link and uh, then on uh, its activity that you prefer and uh, you can see all the content directly. So another one from Kovica. Uh, can you change product uh, for product for assembly easy? I think this one is for interactive product assembly, obviously. Uh, Strato, would you like to answer it? Uh, yes. Uh, technically, you can, but uh, it has to be done by someone, some programmer. In, uh, the virtual reality engine, say. So, even though technically, yes, you can, uh, you have probably have to contact us and uh, see how it can be done. And also, you need the, the CAD design, the electronic uh, format of the, of the product that you want to assemble in order to make it interactive and, uh, let's say, build a game where the user assembles the product. It's a programming procedure like like coding a, an application. It's the same thing, except that uh, it's a VR application, which is real. Maria, Adrian speaking. If I may complete the answer to your question and to um, the, the second one, uh, I think it's important to precise that the, the project is the first phase of a program uh, and that we are uh, what we are presenting here are pilot activities that are already available. But there's a limited number of activities, of course, and a limited number of products that can be used in these activities. And the goal for us is to make sure that there is a phase two after our project which we need good new activities, new products. But for that, we need to demonstrate the, the impact of, the, of this technology and this pedagogical approach. So that's uh, the reason why we are doing this test and the reason why we are interested in your feedback. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Um, to move on with the questions, um, okay, I see one from uh, Cheta. Uh, we will need to buy Lego uh, for, obviously this one is for the Lego Exploratorium. Let me just find the appropriate slide. Uh, actually for this activity, right now we only have a board game that is available through the project, so there is only one. Uh, but soon we will have an online version, a game, that a click and play game, uh, so you won't need to, to buy anything. But if you would like to test it uh, right now, uh, before September or October, 
uh, we, you can get in touch with us and we can provide you all of the materials that you will need for this activity. Another question from uh, Nada. Uh, are there some other activities besides these? Is it possible to define the other activities? So we have in total six activities. Um, uh, I could give you an example. Uh, if I could share my screen, uh, I could uh, show you how the platform um, uh, works. So, just a moment. Okay. So, uh, if you can see my screen now, this is Manuscript's platform. Every tile is a different experiment. For example, uh, Echo Factory, if we click this activity, you can see uh, on the left side some details about um, uh, who made this activity, its subject area, which is sustainable manufacturing, um, uh, the age group appropriate for the activity, for this activity is primary and secondary school, and the skills that uh, the students are expected to gain after this activity. Um, then uh, you can see a brief introduction of what is going to happen. Uh, okay, on the left side, the attachments are the pedagogical scenarios one for each age group, so we have one for primary school with different activities, and one for secondary school, again, with uh, more appropriate activities for this age. Um, okay, and if you click Start Playing here, you can play the game directly. You won't need anything else. So this is one activity. Uh, okay, another activity. The Lego Exploratorium, for example. There is no online version yet. But uh, the idea is the same. Uh, you have the subject area, which is configura configurable product here. The age group, uh, secondary and undergraduate students, and the different skills. And then you have uh, many educational videos on Legos and manufacturing challenges. And of course, on the left side, you have again, the, in the form of attachments, the pedagogical scenarios that you may use. So this is uh, the main idea. I hope uh, it was helpful. I think it was very much helpful, which we can also see in the other comments from the participants that they really appreciate all your work and as well as the presentation today. Um, we have still a few minutes, so uh, everybody is welcome to ask the questions. Um, also, our presenters are invited to, to maybe um, add something at the end if they wish to summarize or uh, to share something extra. Um, in a few minutes we'll be finishing, but it's still some fair time to to ask the question or to, to share. So Maria and Stratus uh, um, and, uh, and Adrian, if you have anything to add. Okay, thank you, Anya. I, I see another question. Um, from Coveza, uh, if we are talking about assembly feats and tolerances should be taken into account, is it realized in product assembly? Um, okay, so this one uh, is uh, for Stratus. Uh, yes, uh, at this point it isn't. 
because uh, we, we don't want to engage the children that much to the to that much in let's say intensive uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, intensive uh, principles of manufacturing. We just want to highlight the the importance of uh, and, and the, the fact that uh, they, real, they don't realize that everything around them is, uh, is has passed through a production line and is manufactured by following a specific plan. Uh, if someone uh, inquires more about uh, stuff, we can tell him, uh, but we don't engage them uh, yet to such intensive uh, principles. Maybe Hadrian uh, at the snowboard uh, uh, do you take into account uh, this type of parameters? I don't know. Yes. Uh, thank you, Stratos. Uh, technically, as you said, uh, this is feasible, but we did not develop yet the pedagogical content for that part, because we wanted to uh, focus on around 15-year-old students, and we think this is uh, not the first step of what we want to do to make the subject uh, attractive. Uh, now, we already have listed a other pedagogical scenario we could develop on the same technology, and uh, this would be a very good complement for phase two after this project. If, of course, we prove that uh, phase one is successful. So we need your feedback for that. Uh, okay, I would like also to mention at this point um, that we are very, very interested, as Andrian said, in uh, your feedback and uh, what you think uh, of the activities because you are the teachers. Uh, these activities are meant for you and your students. Uh, so uh, after this uh, webinar, we would like to circulate some uh, very brief um, uh, questionnaires uh, about uh, the two activities uh, that you saw, the interactive product assembly and how to build a skateboard, with questions like if you could use it, if you liked it, what did you like, what you didn't. So we would really appreciate it if you could take this uh, five or ten minutes to complete the questionnaire and send it back to us. Okay, uh, I would just like to add from my side that in uh, next few days I will be sending you the email with, um, with uh, evaluation form of the webinar itself, but also then I will attach the, the questionnaire from Manuskills Project and, and the email to Maria probably, I guess, but uh, that will be checked still, where you will be asked to send back the, the questionnaire. So, we at least can, uh, in this way, thanks uh, Maria, uh, Adin, and uh, Stratos for, and the other team members, of course, for this great job and the effort they did it for us. It's as I can see it in the the chat the comments, and uh, as I feel it myself, it's really, really a unique and great project. So, thank you very much for uh, for for this. Anything else or Maria? Uh, and anything else? Uh, I just see one last question about the, the if the record of the webinar will be available. I have a question to us. Uh, it will it will be available. Uh, it's, it's, uh, in the few let's say coming weeks, we will post it in the resource repository uh, on Scientix. So when you will um, type in webinar uh, manuscripts and there will be uh, found it. it will be found at uh, one of two or two of them just because it's also the first one which took uh, a place a few weeks ago and this one is already posted and the other one the one, the one from today will be post will be posted soon okay perfect I would just like uh, to thank you Anna and no uh, scientists for hosting us and of course, everyone that participated today, and thank you for your questions.
uh, they were very helpful actually to us. So that's all from us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, from my side and uh, scientific team, I also would like to thank you. Uh, thanks to everybody and invite you already uh, today for the last scientific webinar, which will take uh, place in one week. Uh, so everybody is welcome. Uh, we will still keep on informing you about that. And uh, let's say um, that's all for today. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.